In this question, we have a 73.6 gram sample of liquid water that has an initial temperature of 17.3 degrees C. We're told that the water absorbs heat until it has a final temperature of 37.3 degrees C. Our goal is to figure out how much heat did the water absorb. So we have this table set up for us to find each of the variables that we're going to need. We've got M, C, delta T, and Q. So M, that is our mass, the mass of the substance that we have. So we've, we're told we've got 73.6 grams of liquid water, so that's our mass. C, that is the specific heat capacity of our substance, and we're going to get that from the table. So we're told we have liquid water. So looking at our table on the right, if we find water, we want to find C, the specific heat capacity for liquid water. And that's going to be in this column here. So that gives us our specific heat capacity for water as a liquid of 4.19 joules per gram degree C. So that's going to be our C for liquid water was 4.19 joules per gram degree C. We can fill those in now. So for the mass, we had 73.6 grams. For the specific heat capacity of liquid water, it was 4.19 joules per gram degree C. We then have delta T with these lines on either side. So delta means change, T is temperature. So this is our change in temperature. And those lines means it's the absolute value. In other words, we don't care if it's positive or negative. We just want the size of the value, the magnitude. So to get our delta T, all we need to do is subtract our temperatures from each other. It doesn't matter which order we do it in because we're just looking for the size. We don't care if it's positive or negative. So I'm going to do 37.3 minus 17.3. And that's going to get me a value for delta T of 20 degrees C. So that's our change in temperature. And the last thing we're going to find is Q, which is the amount of heat. And in this question, it's absorbing heat. We can tell that because our temperature increases from 17.3 up to 37.3. And it tells us in the question we're absorbing heat. So we're finding the absolute value or the magnitude of Q, which is the energy absorbed. So let's head to our reference sheet and find a relevant equation. So here we've got our equation for specific heat. Q equals MC delta T. Let's go ahead and write that down. So we've got Q equals M times C times delta T. I remember those vertical lines are just telling us it's the absolute value. That means we just want the magnitude. We don't want the positive or negative sign. So we want to rearrange our equation for our unknown variable, which is Q. But our equation's already arranged for Q. So we can just go ahead and put our numbers in. So Q is going to be M, the mass, which was 73.6 grams, multiplied by C, the specific heat capacity, which is 4.19, multiplied by delta T, which is 20 degrees C. If we put that all into our calculator, we're going to get out a value for Q of 6168 joules. So let's fill that out to check we got it right. So to answer our final question, how much heat did the water absorb? It absorbed 6168, 6168 joules of energy of heat energy. Let's do one more question of this type. This time we have a 42.1 gram sample of liquid methanol that has an initial temperature of 19.6 degrees C. We're told the methanol absorbs 1840 joules of heat and we're trying to find the final temperature of the methanol. Okay, so let's go through and find each of our variables. First, we've got M, which is the mass. We're given that here. It's 42.1 grams, so we can fill that in. 
Next, C, that's our specific heat capacity. And we know the material here is liquid methanol. So looking in our table on the right, here's methanol. We're looking for C, the specific heat capacity of the liquid, which is gonna be this column here. So that gives us a value of 2.53 for the specific heat capacity of liquid methanol. So our C is gonna be 2.53 joules per grams degree C. So we can go ahead and fill that in. Awesome. Delta T, that's our change in temperature. In this question, we're given the initial temperature we're trying to find the final temperature, so we don't know enough information to find delta T yet. However, we do know Q, that's the energy that was absorbed or released. In this question, the methanol absorbs 1,840 joules of heat. So that's going to be our Q value. So we can go ahead and fill that in in this box here. Okay, so we have three known values and one unknown. So we can go ahead and use our equation, the same equation as before, which is the specific heat equation. This time we're trying to find delta T, so we're going to need to rearrange our equation for delta T. So let's divide by M times C on both sides to get rid of that on the right, leaving delta T on its own. So that leaves us with delta T is equal to Q divided by M times C. So let's put in our numbers here. We've got 1840 divided by our M, which is 42.1, multiplied by our C, which is 2.53. If we put that all into our calculator, that's going to get us a delta T or a change in temperature of 17.3 degrees C. So we can go fill that out in this box here. Awesome, so we're done with this work table. Lastly, we're asked, what is the final temperature of the methanol? So we don't wanna just put in 17.3, that's our change in temperature, but we need to give the final temperature. So we're told the initial temperature was 19.6 degrees C. I'm gonna call that T1. And we know that the change in temperature is 17.3 degrees C. We're also told it absorbs heat. If you absorb heat, that means your temperature is going to increase. So we know that we started at 19.6 degrees C, and then we added 17.3 degrees C, which is our delta T, because we absorbed the heat. If the question said it released the heat, then we'd be subtracting 17.3 degrees C. So if we go ahead and add those together, we're gonna to get 36.9 degrees C for our final temperature. Let's try that out in our answer box here. Awesome. So in this question, using the same equation, but this time we had to rearrange for delta T. And remember at the end, when you're trying to find the final temperature, we had to add the change in temperature to the initial temperature because this is a question where we're absorbing heat.